Ever had that feeling that you've learned and reviewed everything you needed to for the exam but you didn't know what the question was asking you for? So that's what I'm going to go through here. I'm going to go through each of what the IB calls the command terms, uh, the ways in which you're being asked to express your knowledge and talk about what each one means. We're going to start with the command term state. We'll start with state. State is one of the simplest command terms. It's straight recall and asking for a word, a phrase or a physical quantity. If you are using a graph, please make sure that you use a ruler for precision. For example, if you're asked for the total lung capacity here, it would be 80 milliliters per kilogram. You need to include the units. Other than that, um, you could be asked to state a number of different things. Here, for example, state the names of the nitrogenous bases in DNA. Now for draw or label. This is one you can practice and should practice in advance. Practice creating a clear image using a pencil. You need to have the relative positions and proportions. You don't need to be an artist. Um, you do want to label the different parts, even though you don't need to explain the different parts. So here I'm giving you all the possible draw and labels, and you should practice every single one of these in preparation for your exam. They're all in the core syllabus. So here's one they've asked a few times, which is the relative positions and connections between the gallbladder, the pancreas and the small intestine and clearly I'm not an artist uh, but they do care that the gallbladder and the pancreas are connected to the small intestine and of course when you're done don't forget to label it. Next up it's uh, when you're asked to list things so this doesn't require again any explanation it's still very simple and straightforward you could be asked to list names or functions and again I'm going to give you some examples of those things that the IB expects you to be able to list. Practice these. Taken from the above, uh, one of the list ones is to list the functions of membrane proteins and for many of these command words you'll find that I have videos to help you with your review. Define. Define is very, very specific. Learn the IB definitions word for word. There are a number of words the IB expects you to be able to define. You can make flashcards, you can recite them, whatever you need to do. So again, here is a list of those things that you should be able to define. Please learn these before you go into the exam. It is a one mark or a no mark scenario. For the example, cell respiration is a controlled release of energy from organic compounds to form ATP. Okay, when you get to describe, this is taking it up a notch here. You could be asked to describe a process, which would be like a detailed account or summary, or you could be asked to describe a graph. If it is a graph, uh, please try to use numbers to support your description. Involve the terms increase, decrease, identify peaks or troughs of that graph and try to state the overall trend that you observe in that graph. Again, supporting yourself with numbers where possible. So if you were asked to use this graph to describe the prevalence of diabetes over time from 1990 to 2000, you might say that while it fluctuated, overall the prevalence of diabetes increased from 5% in 1990 to 7% in 2000. So that's an overall increase of 3% over 10 years. And you might also point out that in 1993 it was at its lowest point at 4.5%. So to give you one of the other examples as well, you could be asked to describe the process of mitosis. So this would be uh, that detailed account that I referred to earlier. So outline comes up a lot as well. Uh, this is kind of like described, but it's a more of a brief account or a summary, and it may or may not involve a diagram. For example, you could be asked to outline the cell cycle, and this might be your supporting diagram. Now we come to distinguish, which students often confuse uh, with describe. For distinguish, you need to identify the differences between two or more different items. And uh, to do this most easily, they actually suggest that you use the words whereas, however, or than uh, to make your distinguishing clear to the examiner. For example, you can't just say that an antigen is a protein marker used to identify cells, an antibody is a protein produced by B cells. Uh, you actually have to put those words in between to make sure that you're being clear that you're distinguishing. So for example, you would say uh, antigen is a protein marker used to identify cells, whereas uh, an antibody is produced by B cells. It's a protein that's secreted and binds with very specific antigens to result in agglutination. 
It's those terms whereas, however, and then that really make the difference. It's simple, but it ensures that you get the mark. There are very specific standards that ask you to distinguish, so practice and make sure you can do that before the exam. On to calculate. Now, there's nearly always at least one calculation question that uh, commonly comes up in the paper two or paper three. Uh, you're expected to know how to calculate mean and standard deviation linear magnification. I do have videos to review those if you need to do so. But commonly you also ask for percentage, uh, percentage change, increase or decrease. So here are the formulae to remind you how to do that. As an example, I'm referencing a graph that we saw earlier. Perhaps you might be asked to give the percentage increase in mean body weight between the year 1991 and 1996. In such a case, you would take the value for 1996, which is uh, 6%. Subtract the value for 1991, which was 4.5%. Divide that all by the 91 value of 4.5 multiplied by 100, as I'm showing you, gives you 33.3%. Please remember to show your working annual units as often there's a mark for these two. On to compare. Now you can consider this to be like distinguish, but instead of just giving the differences, you have to give the similarities as well. Here it's often the similarities that are forgotten. So for example, you could be asked to compare the structure of DNA and RNA. Again, look for the compare standards in your syllabus. So with discuss, we're getting into some of the most challenging command words, which are often also worth more marks. Here you're expected to give arguments for and against and consider the relative importance of the different factors that you point out. Consider it to be telling both the positive and negative sides of a story. For example, discussing the exposure to sunlight as a possible source of vitamin D or talking about the benefits and harm of gene transfer. Explain is the command term that's like describe, but it's describe and give a reason for what you're observing. And without that reason, you are not going to get full marks. For example, when you're explaining the mechanism of ventilation, you need to talk about the change that occurs and the actions that caused that change. With suggest, we're getting to some of the hardest command words. Um, so this is the second to last one. This means you're being asked to propose a hypothesis, a testable explanation or some other possible answer. My words of advice for this one are, first of all, where possible, please base it on what you've learned in the biology course. And also make sure that your suggestion is consistent and possible given the data they've provided you with in the question. And now for evaluate, considered one of the most challenging command words. So you could be asked to evaluate the implications and limitations of a process or event, or if it's a data analysis, that could be the evaluation of a hypothesis. For the former, consider it much like a discussion of the pros and cons for the implication, but an evaluate includes much more discussion of the relative effect of those in reaching the desired outcome. For the latter, where a graph is involved, let's say that you were asked for, to evaluate the hypothesis that an increased mean body weight leads to an increased prevalence of diabetes. Here you would be expected to find data that is either in support of the hypothesis or not in support of the hypothesis. Locate the data and give a description of it stating whether it does or does not support the hypothesis. Often there is data both supporting and not supporting. It's just your job to identify it. So my final thoughts on presenting your knowledge the way the IB is asking for it. Remember the number of marks is often the number of distinctly different thoughts. Please don't leave the examiner to complete your thought. They won't give you a mark for that. This year it's likely your paper will be e-marked, so keep your answers in the boxes provided to ensure that all of them are scanned and read by the examiner. Make sure your writing is clear. If they can't read it, they won't give you a mark. And finally, good luck in your exams.